the Clearing 2023 show review. This I'm recording this after season one has aired. Right now it doesn't look like there will be more than one season. If there is down the line, then I will do another video where I talk about the other seasons. I'm going to start by telling you this was a show that I absolutely loved. This video will have some jokes and we'll get into some serious topics. And so let's see. Yes, I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. This video is a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. And if you want my spoiler filled thoughts on episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. And yes, yeah, so this is not rated, but the um, yeah, the the um, yeah, some countries say you should be eighteen before watching this and I think that makes a lot of sense it is you know there there is child abuse and some profanity it's not a very you know there's not a lot of outright sexual material and violence isn't shown a lot now, yes, so I've watched every single episode once each, and let's see, so yeah, the, the plot. I'm going to use some of the IMDB one, so yeah, a woman is forced to confront the nightmares of her past which involves a secret cult gathering children and I think you know the the, the first two episodes it, uh, premiered the same day but other than that it's been one episode per week I think that makes a lot of sense I'm not sure I would try to binge this show uh, you know I've, yeah I wouldn't really recommend that. So let's get into the writing. So this was, let's see, yeah, so the, the writers were Matt Cameron, Elise McCready, J.P. Pomer wrote the book that it's based on, and the and and Osama Sami was a co-writer, but Matt Cameron and Elise McCready were also uh, what's it called? Show show creators for it, and they do a really great job. Like all the different characters have a voice of their own. It really explores all the awful things about cults rather well. It touches on gender, race, and. I think that's what I'm gonna say about the writing itself. So, uh, yeah, the the show handles plot twists really well, and uh, yeah, the the opening. Uh, I, I hesitate to call it a pilot episode, but yeah, the 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 very first episode of the very f of the season is really really excellent. It's one of the best that I've seen in a very very long time. I, I, um, it's, it's, it, it promises a lot, and I feel that the rest of the season delivers really well, um, and, and this is really, this is one of those cases where, like, if you watch the, the season opener, if you watch the very first episode, you don't even have to watch the second, but if you watch the very first episode, you're really going to have a great idea of whether or not it's a show for you. Some some people did not. You know, some people felt it was too confusing and I agree that it's confusing. I think it uses the confusion it creates to make a point about trauma. 
about how difficult it can be to to keep a grasp on reality on on perception of reality and recollection if you've suffered a lot of trauma especially as a child and but but yeah if you find the the first episode too confusing this is not a show for you 100 percent and it's not trying to be and i think that is what i will say for now and the the finale is also excellent it's one of those finales where like the the yeah the ending of this i don't think i want to say what movie but it reminds me of a lot of a um, movie of, of of one specific movie basically you could make more you could continue the story but if not if there if there is never more than the one season of this show it resolves everything that it really needs to and it ends things in a way where it feels satisfying and that's a sh this is a show that really does not want to satisfy too much like there's a there's a mystery with a with a drip feed of information and it like some people have felt that it was way too slow way too little information way too many questions and i think that it again you know like life with you know suffering the after effects of trauma can be very very frustrating and and stifled and you feel like things aren't getting you know so so i feel you know i don't think that the show is doing a bad job at doing what we're used to i think it's doing an excellent job at delivering something very very different now i have not read the the book so i cannot comment on how it adapts i do know a little bit about i i only what the the wikipedia says about the the actual you know this is based on the the um hold on i have the information let's see so right and i don't think i mentioned before it is australian and i think it is also set in australia uh, possibly New Zealand, but but one of the, the two, yeah. And it's a yeah, it's a fictionalized, fictionalized account of the Australian New Age group, the Family. And I do only know about them what was in the the Wikipedia article, but but yeah, um, it definitely does take some major um, liberties. I think it did a good job of like you know some something happens very early fairly early on that as far as i've been able to tell did not happen in real life with the actual cult but it's a a choice that just makes a lot of sense for an adaptation to to really get the audience very very emotionally invested from right away kind of thing and I think I will just, but but yeah, you know they they actually yes, that I will. Let's get into the the direction. So this was directed by the oh, hold on, there we go, Gracie Otto and Jeffrey Walker, and I honestly don't really, I'm not familiar with their other work uh, you know this appears to be one of the first really really big things that you know they've done some some shorts and video stuff and such but uh, yeah this is uh, it's very very self-assured like you wouldn't think that to, to be fair it's not like the very first thing they have worked on other TV shows as well, but but yeah, um, it's very very self assured. It it doesn't feel like it's you know the work of people who are still trying to find their voice or still just getting the hang of it or oh, they just 
got out of like film school and they they haven't quite you know they they haven't worked out like they they still they're still really fascinated by this and that and the other thing so they overuse it and nothing like that it really feels like the the work of of you know it it has a very distinct voice and personality and i really respect that it it does a lot of things that like you can you can understand why a number of the reviews especially user reviews are middling or even negative. Now, like the movie Martha, Marcy, Mar May, Marlene, this makes it clear that there is a during the cult and there is an after the cult. Those two parts of your life are very clearly delineated. It displays a number of the things that cults do to control their members. And while, of course, most people will never be in a cult, many of the things that they do are important to try to recognize in other parts of life. Avoid the people who treat you like this. Uh, really excellent acting from everyone involved uh, and uh, just like I'm I'm really really I'm in awe of like this has the best child actors I've seen in a very long time and I've long said you know I don't think we should be asking children to act I think children should get a normal upbringing and then you know like yes I I agree it's weird when they try to convince us that a 30-year-old is really a 15-year-old or whatever, but anyway, with that said, and, and, you know, I don't blame any child for not being an amazing actor. You know, there's, like, there's life experience, there's, like, you know, it's limited how many years they can have been training to act and, and these things, you know, but with that said, like, the, the depth of emotion like, I especially want to highlight the acting talents of Julia Savage and, uh, hold on, I have the other name, and Lily Latore. They both do such amazing work. It's, it's, yeah. And, um, you know, I got a shout out, Guy Pierce, who I've, uh, you know, I've been a big fan of his Ah, uh, 20 years, I guess. It's, I, I'm, yeah, I, I think I, there's, he's been in stuff that I don't like overall, but I like him in it, you know. And Miranda Otto, who I, other than this, I really only know her from the Lord of the Rings, but she's amazing both here and there, and she plays two incredibly distinct characters uh, from each other. And the protagonist is played by Teresa Palmer, who, you know, I've, I've been... Oh, right, I did see her. Huh. Okay, I forgive her for being in I Am Number Four. There were, you know, someone had to. And I'm sure she had fun, because I remember that character. But yeah, um, you know, I've been... I've the People have recommended me watching you know, at least one of the horror movies that she's in, you know, for some time now, and, yeah, you know, I've, I've been meaning to, to get around to watching something that she was in, and then this hit Disney+. Plus. She does an amazing job here. I, I, yeah, I, I don't know if it is specifically because I, I know some people think of her just as conventionally attractive and don't think that her acting is is up to par. Maybe she took this role in part to to combat that, but I I don't know how widespread that conception is. But it does remind me very much of how the um I'll, I'll have it momentarily in Iron Fist the yeah, it, Alice Eve does amazing work there, and she is someone that I've heard many say that, oh, you know, she's attractive and that's it, you know, but in that show, she really displays that, no, there's, she she's incredibly talented of an actress, and yeah. Now, one of the things that I truly deeply love about both the show and Martha, Marcy May, Marlene is the way that they're able to communicate something that those of us who personally know people with severe trauma know, 
and a lot of people who don't simply don't realize it can take almost nothing to set off someone who has been traumatized, send them into a panic attack, give them overwhelming anxiety. Not only do you know that movie and this show get that message across, which could increase empathy for those who have been traumatized, but it dramatizes it extremely well, leading to true empathy and, well, incredibly compelling filmed fiction. And let's see. Yeah, and I really appreciate, you know, the, the show takes this setup and while obviously in part doing thriller it is also a drama about complex family relationships i really appreciate that it's not just thriller we have plenty of stories with similar setups to this that are just thriller you know there's a lot of stories about cults it's been a, a pretty significant anxiety of western culture for you know some decades now the the idea you know in part it stems from the the How political am I going to get this early in the video? In part, it stems from that America is run by... And I realize, I realize this is not... Actually, yeah, to, you know what? I'll just dive right into Australia. You know, there there is a... Let me, let me rewind slightly. The British Empire, you know in part driven very much by Christianity and Christianity you know what you'll what you'll find when you look at organized religion is one of the things they're most scared of is stuff that's very similar to that religion so cults or other practices that resemble you know just so so yeah um, but yeah, and you can understand why cults, you know, like, I'm not a person of faith. I never have been. I never will be. But I am, you know, I, yeah, cults are really creepy. You know, you, you have this, like, society that's segregated from the rest of society, which means that you can't really do, you know... Whenever someone is integrated in society, if they start saying or doing things that are considered unacceptable, you know, it doesn't always lead to, like, the proper kind of, uh, what's it called? Intervention. But, you know, at the very least, that person is maybe going to lose some friends, going to be somewhat socially is isolated, and at that point, it's basically like, okay, am I going to apologize and stop saying and doing those things, or am I just going to, you know, be really isolated, you know, and, and cults allow for those isolated people to continue, you know, without any castigation, and they might actually be castigated if they try to go away from, you know, one of the cults, one of the things they hate the most is people who leave the faith. But, but yeah, you know, I, to get back to, you know, yeah, it is in part a drama about complex family relationships. Like, it actually is about what, what happened to the people both during and after the cult, and how has it what has it done to the rest of their lives, you know, and the, the, yeah, it's not a spoiler to say some of this is set, you know, decades after the, the cult activity. And, yeah, um, the, the, the kids from the cult, you know, on some level, they do feel like the cult leader was, you know, the, the female cult leader, played by Miranda, um, yeah, Miranda Otto, Adrienne, they feel like she was their mother, uh, you know, and they feel like the other kids were their siblings, and that, yeah, you know, they're... Family is already complex and difficult without cult interference, but yeah. 
and some of the characters, due to the cult-induced trauma, are emotionally stunted in their ability to feel and express love and tenderness has been warped. I greatly admire how much of the show how much of the show will do to deny the viewer catharsis will think that something will be resolved only to see that subverted and right so some crit quotes the knockout performances of Miranda Otto and Teresa Palmer mixed with a thrilling psychological mystery makes the series well worth watching the clearing gives us an Adrian a wicked stepmother to rival any in the extensive Disney canon only this one is anchored in the real is an impressive first swing in the streamer's local drama game. Here's hoping there's much more to come. Now, let's see. The clearing quickly subverts expectations, adding twists and turns to make Palmer's storyline even more thrilling than the perversity of the kindred cult. The series skillfully conveys the ease with which one can disappear, never to return. What the series... Uh, yeah, some... some I don't completely agree with the following, but some have felt what the series gains in atmosphere loses in urgency. At its best, the clearing adopts a dreamlike tone, one locked into the false reality created by Adrian and her followers, but sometimes the dreaminess just feels languid. I suppose, I, yeah, I agree with the positives that they said there, but I really don't agree with any of the negatives. And... Let's see... Right. The clearing eerily succeeds in making us feel how hard it is to break the bonds from a cult-like figure and entity. The evocative cinematography and nervy performances Guy Pierce reflects the analytical face of evil. Keep you on edge and uncertain where this one's heading throughout. And, yeah, so one, one critical review said, The first episode of The Clearing left us too frustrated and confused for us to want to watch any more of this creepy cult thriller. And I feel like... I think it might actually be on purpose that it's that because it's it definitely is very very confusing. I think they did a, an amazing job. Like I've I've talked to some people who had really severe trauma and like you know it makes sense to them, but it doesn't like that. Well, they'll they'll try to explain something and like you'll you'll be able to follow it some of the way, and then they'll make this leap. That you just you can't really follow you like you can you can empathize with them but it you know without experiencing it and that's you know the show allows us to experience it you know without a, without us experiencing it we can't completely you know we can we can empathize we can feel bad for them and you know but yeah and and the the yeah it it is as confusing as not not all. But some people with trauma, their their perception of the world. And let's see. Its practices are eerily reminiscent of modern American iterations. I don't know how to pronounce uh, NXIVM. That historical basis and nimble fictionalized mystery led by a bewitching Otto make the clearing a captivating Aussie transplant that burrows deep into cult psychology and its lifelong effects without feeling exploitative. Absolutely agreed. And let's see. Though at times these early episodes play like a procedural stretched across more episodes than necessary, the cast's work and the fascinating repulsive story that inspired the series make it compelling enough to suggest it will be worth pushing through the rest of the series. Just don't expect, given how closely these first episodes stick to the can. The facts of the case, that what's more, what's to come to be any less uncomfortable. It's great pacing for a thriller series with so much secrecy involved, keeping us curious and wanting to come back for more, all the while still giving enough information so we can start figuring some things out on our own. If the rest of the clearing season maintains the same rhythm, the series will most definitely be a hit with mystery fans. And... Let's see... Oh. While TV often de deploys split timelines to feign narrative depth and spring gimmicky twists, the clearing's temporal structure deftly elucidates the cult's devastating legacy. Freya's profound trauma courses through every scene she's in, and that's the character played by Teresa Palmer. And that brings us to... So yes, um, the characters, 
Teresa Palmer, there is... Right, Teresa Palmer as Freya Haywood, there's a very distinct paranoia. She She's very worried what the the cult are are capable of and yeah she does a, a really really great job I um, I'm not sure I'm gonna say too much more about her now Miranda Otto something I really appreciate we don't get it right away but we do get a lot of her backstory and, you know, yeah, she's this very charismatic, like, you can understand how people follow her, and that's extremely important for the realism of one of these, you know, you can't make them just, like, a complete, you know, it has to be credible to the audience, otherwise we just can't get it, or then you're, like, trying to just do a thing where you're just painting them as evil, you know, but, yeah, she's very charismatic, she's very driven, and there's actually, there's this... I don't want to give too much away. I'll just say that you can you can completely understand why she does what she does and why people believe her in the way that they do. Guy Pierce plays Dr. Bryce Latham and he is also a, a important figure in the cult and like you really get the sense that he does believe what he's saying which obviously makes him all the more like terrifying I am not sure how much I want to give away about Julia Savage she's she's one of the more prominent of the ch child cult members her character's Amy, and yeah, like, it's, it's, some of the way you just have this thing of, like, you know, it's a, it's a cult, they don't have a lot of patience for misbehaving children, and children, you know, children will automatically, like, try to to carve out an identity of their own and not follow every rule that they're given. And yeah, it just the the this is of course compounded when you have a cult and like she's literally you know among other things they're not being given enough food. You know, and that's the kind of thing that like, you know, even even if you try to believe in it, that's the kind of thing that's very difficult to forgive for, you know, yeah. And, yeah, she's, she's very, very compelling, which is good because we spend a good amount of time focusing on her. Hassem Jam Shamas plays Yusuf uh, Joe Saad. He's a cop trying to bring down the, the kindred, the cult. And it's it's very it's clear that it is basically it's it's getting to him. It's he is essentially obsessed. The um Kate Mulvaney plays Tamsin Latham, who, you know, she has a, yeah, she's also an important figure in the, the cult, and I really appreciate, like, at first, it I wasn't entirely sure how complex her character was going to be, but she is, you know, yeah, quite complex, and... I think, um, yeah, I don't know if I want to get into too many more. Um, 
Yeah. Um, let's see. Right. I already mentioned. You know. There's. So. So. Yeah. You know. Yusuf is a. You know. His. I'm. I'm not entirely sure if he moved from the the Middle East or if it was his his parents or further back. But. You know. Yeah. His family originally came from the Middle East, and it also deals some with Islamophobia after 9-11. And then, you know, you see how the, the, the women are treated compared to men. You see how, you know, there's um, the character of Wayne Durke is um, indigenous, and um, I think that might right. And you have the character of Mo, short for Muhammad, played by Raz Samuel Welda Dabzgi, who you know again, again, you know, yeah. Um, there's a. I'm, I'm guessing Middle Eastern, certainly it's a, it's a Muslim name, you know, and they do a really good job of exploring how, you know, some of them are treated worse than white people, especially white men. And, let's see... Yeah, the dialogue is is great. Everyone, you know, yeah, every everyone speaks in a way that is very much informed by who they are and where are they in the hierarchy. So, you know, Yusuf doesn't necessarily always push the white cops that he's working with and for as hard as you know you can you can tell that he's he's restraining himself you know and when the the cult members talk to some of the the leadership in the cult like you can tell that it's it's extremely difficult for them to to confront them despite all the cruel things that the cult did and the, the cult leadership will often fire back with incredibly, you know, incredible verbal cruelty. And, you know, they'll, sometimes they'll talk in circles to try, to try to avoid accountability. Sometimes they'll blame cult members for what the leadership did to them. And, yeah, they... they really did an amazing job and and I can imagine you know some some of these actors must be cool for them to you know like like I mentioned I've seen Guy Pearce in a lot of stuff he's usually having to to pretend to be like American or, or British and let's see now Right, the, the, um, yeah, he definitely, he spent some of his childhood in Australia, at least, and, let's see, yeah, yeah, it looks like he spent a lot of it, you know, and based, from what I hear, Teresa Palmer has played an American a bunch of times, and, Miranda Otto, I mean, yeah, like her accent, it's definitely not Australian in the Lord of the Rings. So, so yeah. Really, really. And that brings us to the cinematography, which, let's see, the... Yes, the cinematography is handled by Campbell Brown and Katie Millwright. And Campbell has 16 cinematography credits in total. Some of them are for shorts, but she has also... And, and some music video and such. She has done other... 
uh, episodes of TV shows, and Katie Millwright has 66 finished cinematography credits. So she has a lot of experience. She's been doing it since 2001. And it's again, yeah, other TV shows, shorts, music videos, and such. Not really anything I'm familiar with, but I will definitely say the cinematography is one of the strongest aspects of this. They, they do a really amazing job. Both the, really, it's the cinematography and editing together that make things confusing the way they're supposed to be and, w and when they're supposed to be. And, like, for, for example, sometimes they'll do this, like, sort of POV shot where, because of, like, the lens, it's, like, distorted, you know, and the the... Which, you know, that is sometimes the way that, that people with trauma, when triggered, it is like the world is, is distorted. And, yeah, the, the, I'm going to get into the, the editing, which is handled by Ann Carter and Jeff Lamb. And Ann has 46 credits. As editor, yeah, um, TV series, oh, as far back as 1991, TV movies, shorts, various, yeah, and Jeff Lamb has 46 credits as editor, going as far back as 1999, and yeah, the, the editing, truly amazing. They the they really managed to capture this way of like distorting perception of reality and keeping like there there are things in this that feel like they're happening now. And then later we realize, oh, that wasn't now, that was actually back then, or maybe it didn't happen at all. And I, I get the, the urge to when you're dealing with hallucinations in fiction to make it like almost overpowering, like obvious, this is hallucination. Because, you know... Absolutely, there is a place for that. I, I think they did an amazing job in a lot of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, where, like, a lot of the time it's very obvious, okay, this must be a nightmare. And the thing you do when you when you signal to the audience, this is a nightmare, is we're, we're kind of... We're, we're ready to be scared by it in a way that is, you know, if, if you see something and you only later, in retrospect, realize that was actually a hallucination, you know, you're going to interpret it as if it's real. And, you know, it's it can be scary, but in a different way. And, and you know, basically, like, as soon as you're dealing with hallucinations, with, with imagined stuff... You can basically do anything that, like, the budget and writing and such allows for, you know. But if you make it feel like reality, and then afterwards you, the audience realizes, then, you know, that gets across something that some people with who have suffered trauma know that a lot of people who don't, who haven't, who haven't don't know, and that's that sometimes hallucinations feel like reality, you know, you can't, you only, like, logically you realize that can't possibly have been reality, and it's extremely important to, to empathize more with people who hallucinate, and just, yeah, they, they just, incredible work on the, on the editing, and, 
Yeah, there's also sometimes very effective use of intercutting and parallel action. And... Yeah, that's it for the editing. So there's not, it's not an incredibly special effects heavy, like there's, there's effective stuff, but a lot of it is in editing, not like actual special effects. But what there is of special effects is very, very nicely done, very convincing. And there's some incredible stuff work, like there's some stuff where it's like, holy crap, how did they do that safely? You know, again, it's not like super violent, but there is some stuff that, yeah. And this was shot, let's see, yeah, some of this was shot in Melbourne, Australia, and they they get a really, the um, what's the word? They get great use out of the locations that they use. They they absolutely like the the what's the word? There's a real authenticity to it that you just don't get on sets, you know. And it actually it does they they something they do very effectively is that parts like some sometimes nature kind of becomes synonymous with the cult you know some of the time they were like in this you know natural environment and yeah you know like imagine not being able to see grass or trees and not in some way think about you know your time with a cult that you know m must be horrifying the music is handled by Mark Bradshaw, who has composed for 20 things in total. And yeah, a number. Yeah, yeah, some of these are like shorts and such. But yeah, he has, as far as I can tell, also composed for feature films. And yeah, he did an amazing job here. Um, the the music is is very very affecting like the the it really gets to you like it it's it it tears at your your sense of calm and that brings us right there's some excellent sound design as well which is also incredibly important when you're playing with perception of reality and yeah, so the pacing, certainly some people will feel it is too slow. And it definitely is the kind of thing where, like, I know people who would love aspects of this that I won't be recommending watch the show because of the, the pacing. And it really... Yeah, some some people will definitely feel it is too slow and that there is not enough of a like the mystery starts right away and you are really involved in it from right away. Some people will feel it takes too long for it to unravel. I do think I'm I'm really glad that they have eight episodes. I I didn't feel like they were just Ah, what's the word? It never felt to me like they were struggling to to fill time or, or something. Like, I don't know. It's possible that they were, like, that there was a specific, they had to deliver eight episodes. But there's no episode that feels like filler. There's no episode that I think they should have just done away with. And, yeah, the, the running times vary, but they're frequently around 50 minutes. Like, yeah, there's one episode that's 46. But, yeah, they're, they're frequently around that time. So, and that brings us... So, yeah, the... Um, 
the best element of this show is definitely how it explores trauma and cult. You know, yeah, I, I, I've seen other stories about cults, and I don't. I think it's important to focus on former cult members. You know, I've seen stories where they just focus on, you know, oh, the cult's crazy, and, you know, something bad happens. But former cult members is extremely important to, to of an, you know, of a something that actually happens to explore. Because, you know, there are some in society, and we have to, you know try to help them to, to reintegrate as, as best we can. Okay, so this is the part where I, in each of these reviews, I try to force myself to say at least one really negative thing and call it the worst aspect. I'm not sure I really have much of anything. Um... No, I, I don't. I don't think I really have anything. Now, uh, yeah, the the worst thing, according to others, you know, definitely like pacing, and some felt that it just wasn't the that the I, I saw one critic say it was kind of bland, which, you know, I yeah, I don't see it, but yeah. Now, I was worried that I would really struggle to connect with this on account of, you know, I, I don't watch that much media from Australia. I, I'm not, like, avoiding it. I just don't, I don't know that much. But, yeah, I, I really, really quickly got into it. And, yeah, the thing I was most looking forward to was the exploration of a cult and the cast, and it absolutely exceeds my expectations for both. And yeah, you know, the, the season opener is great, the season finale is great, the overall season is also great. Now, the cover and poster don't... Oh, hold on. The, the tray... Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah. The cover and poster do not give too much away. And... you know, give you a, a decent idea of what the show is like. The trailer does give at least a little bit too much away. Difficult not to, but it does also give you a good idea of what the show is like. And... Let's see. Right, so, the... That brings us to... Rotten Tomatoes, where it has, uh, there we go, an 86% on the tomato meter and a 62, all oh right, 86 based on 14 reviews and a 62 audience score based on less than 50 ratings. The consensus, deriving extra flavor from its Australian setting, Miranda Otto's unsettling performance, The Clearing, is an eerie thriller with plenty to recommend. And of the 14 critics, only two of them gave it a rotten review. The average rating was 6.50 out of 10. The average audience rating was 3.7 out of 5. Anything above 3.5 is considered positive. Let's real quick. Um, yeah, and the two negative, you know, one of the negative reviews on Rotten Tomatoes says it's bland and underwhelming. And the other says the first episode was so confounding we had to watch it twice to figure it out. And yeah, I I agree that it's very confusing, but as mentioned, I do think it's both on purpose and really great. Honestly, if the if the pilot if the first episode had not been as confusing as it is, I'm not sure I would have been like you know. Other than that, it's. I, I don't know that it's the the. You know. Yeah, it's a, it's the very first episode. You know, it just it sets stuff up that later episodes are going to be able to deliver on. But 
because it was like it's one of my favorite uh, pi season openers in a in a very long time. And yeah, so on Metacritic, it has a 61 out of 100, five positive reviews, two negative ones, and the negative ones. Uh, I'm not sure it's the same two reviewers, but it's the same base. It, yeah, they're saying the same things as the reviewers of the on on Rotten Tomatoes. There are no reviews, no user reviews on Metacritic, but the yeah, it got one positive and one mixed rating which is not enough for them to make a score. Right, I, I, I'm not sure if I've said... Internationally, this is on Hulu, but here in Western Europe, at least in some places, it is on Disney+. Plus. And yes, it is behind an age gate. Now, that brings us to the ratings on IMDB. It has a 6.1 out of 10 based on 1,100 uh, ratings. 17.6% gave it 10, 16.2 gave it 7, 16.1 gave it 6, 14.3 gave it 8, 9.3 gave it 1. I mean, yeah, I guess people who thought it was too confusing, people who you know, I, I can imagine maybe some people just, like, really don't think we should be making shows that show child cruelty. And I can, uh, you know, I can completely understand that. And I, something I really admire is that they don't tend to, like, you know, rub our face in it so much as just, like, imply that it's happening. Maybe mention it or describe it, but not show too much. 8.8% gave it 5 I, I gotta say, giving this any lower than a 5 doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, 6.4 gave it 9, 5.6 gave it 4, 3.1 gave it 3, 2.6 gave it 2. And let's see, so there are 11 IMDb reviews, and 8 of them don't have any spoilers. And let's see, so of the 11, real quick, there's one of them gave it a 1, one of them gave it a 3, 2 gave it a 4, 1 gave it a 7, 3 gave it an 8, and 3, oh hold on, 2 gave it a 10. So yeah, it's, it's very mixed in that regard. Um, that is... yeah, that brings us to the very end of the review, and yeah, um, eight traumatized former cult members out of ten is my rating. Um, this is the kind of thing that I I don't know. Like I loved it. I don't. It might be a while before I watch it again. Uh, it is it is emotionally exhausting, and it is you know it is dark and and upsetting to watch. Um, yeah, it might be a while, um, but I'm definitely gonna be watching it again. And if we're just talking quality, I'd watch it again later today. And, yeah, I think, you know, I, I wish it had gotten an even better reception. I I can imagine it might be something that people will come back to. Um, the, the right, the, the political right, you know, like, sudden turn that a number of countries here in the West have taken in recent years... We've already seen some people become de-radicalized and warn against the movements that they used to be part of. I think that's going to happen much, much more in the future as more and more people realize that the you know conservative movement of today, maybe maybe 50 years ago, but of today, not going to solve their problems. It's not interested in it. It wants their votes, their anger, 
it wants to mobilize them, but it does not want to, you know, I, I as a progressive, I do want to solve the problem, the actual problems that conservatives, the conservative voters are dealing with, not conservative politicians. They, their problems, you know, the things they do are why things are, are so bad. They do not have problems that needs solving. They they need to be voted out and replaced with people who are going to do a significantly better job. But yeah, I, I foresee in the future many more people will leave these movements and I think this is something that's going to help people deal with having been tricked into something because that is difficult to you know, that is something you need to recover from. So, uh, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite, uh, you know, movie, show, you know, whatever, that deals with cults, and why? And, uh, yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists. I suggest a video if you watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and one talking about my spoilerful thoughts on the current MCU show, which these days is Secret Invasion. Uh, the most recent episode that has aired for me of True Lies. The most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of Scream Queens. Uh, let's see. And recently the reviewing thoughts videos. To, right, and once Star Wars... Right. These days, I'm also doing animated Star Wars, and as soon as a new current Star Wars thing hits MCU, uh, hits Disney Plus, I will also do videos on that as soon as I can. And recently, the reviewing thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, so separate videos, since it's running time significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalogs. We'll catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I will catch you next time.